Hey guys, going to talk about EOS today. It's not one I know fundamentally. You should check out Jeff Berwick's interview with Josh Sigurdsson and many other resources um, on the EOS project. Uh, but I do know my technical analysis and I'm also going to weave in a narrative. Uh, so there's going to be a couple of layers in this um, of understanding good defense and the value of timing. EOS, in terms of uh, coming out of nowhere and becoming quite a substantial market cap player, you know, you're looking at number five, um, and not that long ago, very few of us knew much about uh, EOS and their plans. There you go, you have them, um, 17.9 uh, billion. So, you know, uh, certainly some of these guys that have been speaking fundamentally, there's something going on there and there's some great value. But the importance of timing is very, very uh, valuable. The importance of method in terms of knowing when to get involved. Um, so if I just pull a bit more history on here, you'll see that we had many upside continuations um, and our uh, community have been trading it long and taking uh, money out of this on the long side all the way up to the exhaustive high there at what's it looks like $23. Anyway, just going back just to capsulate uh, the key high. You get to a point where you need to know and understand when to defend instead of attack. Um, and this is the content of the webinar that I'm going to be doing on May the 17th. That's right at 1930 GMT plus one times. We're on British summer time, so it's GMT plus one or BST time. 1930 BST time. Go to the website and getting started to find out more about this. But this concept of uh, defending what you've got and knowing when to defend and when not to attack. A couple of uh, new guys uh, posted this structure here. In other words, this high point here, this pull down and this structure here for an upside. And they were quickly corrected that uh, this is not likely to be an upside move that it's for a number of reasons that we explain in our programs and courses um, as to why it could in fact be a very high risk for a downside uh, breakdown so when this was being floated a couple of uh, you know they thought no no look there she goes it's pumping it's going to be going no 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 went there pull back look 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 there she goes it's pumping no 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 and it's not that we're clairvoyant it's the methodology the structure and understanding what we want to see in a setup and the key point is if you've made a lot of the money going on the upside you don't want to give it back chasing long when the long is no longer the game note also uh, some things that i have mentioned before that i'm quite happy to mention again is that you've got a massive pump melt up move massive pump melt up move another little continuation huge melt up and then it got real volatile and quite spiky and you, you had in percentage terms one of the deepest pullbacks of what you made so essentially that break came out there nice little bull flag there and you took back better part of 70% of it. So we go into a lot of the structure of the, the pattern and why this was a high risk for a first setup in a new trend um, and that this in fact was a trend change event and also how to do your 360 degree analysis. There was quite a bit that went into this and you can learn more um, as part of our community and through the training program. But the key element is once you identify it and you've got a target, I mean, it just fell into our hands in terms of how it traded. This uh, um, popped out of a rising wedge and then quickly died, broke the wedge high and actually did what rising wedges are on balance of probabilities meant to do sell off, but you can get the pop out. This is what we importantly teach as well. You'll learn about that traditional technical analysis is less practical in that sense. Um, and so you've got the proper break. You also got a bear flag rally just before the breakdown. Very, very common. We, we'll, we'll teach you about DNA. What gives you the DNA as to what's likely to occur just before the main capitulation. You could have actually shorted here. In fact, I put in a line and we teach you also in the program about line of efficiency so you might not see that there's a line there. That is your potential early entry. That would be your, what we call a just-in-time entry, and that was your target um, for the first move sell-off. Now, we call that a line of efficiency. You'll learn about line of efficiency, if, uh, as I say, if you came on board. Um, but just for simple layman's terms, you want that line to be as steep as is humanly possible. You want that line to be as steep as is humanly possible. So I've dropped a bit on the time frame, so I'm just going to pull that event, uh, the main event uh, of the short in there. Now, if you don't, if you say, hey, I can't do the shorting, I never want to be short cryptos. Cryptos are just too strong, they only go up, etc. That's a belief system, by the way. But let's say you think that you uh, 
that there will be no night, only day, and the nights will be exceedingly short, and you don't ever want to do anything particularly about them. Um, well, you could just play great defense, not be long not be holding you can get square and you can play defense and sit it out it's a difficult thing when you start your development as a trader you see we have a bull bias an inherent tendency and value to only see particularly and amazingly on high volatility items that are high volatility to the upside not to see the possibility that they can be high volatility to the downside so a highly volatile instrument will have huge moves to the upside and occasionally too it will have big 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 sell-offs we saw most alts lose 84 85 percent on the downside um, during the uh, the recent bear market which may still have uh, a couple of sell-offs in it anyway so what do you what do you do you could at least get square and not lose or you could hedge your portfolio you don't have to sell all of them and let all your eos but you could sell short for a short period so that you make whatever profit that you would lose that would be a hundred percent hedge you could do a hundred and twenty percent hedge if you're confident about it once your confidence grows and you've had the method and you're in a community and you're doing it and you're seeing this true and it works um, in these events then you can come up 20 percent up even though your coin smashed down because your 100% hedge covers exactly that loss and you can take some gain. And as you get more confident in that, you grow. And what happened after this? Let's just drill down. What happened after this for EOS? Over here, you get the rally. And what do you get? You get a wind up. And we'll teach keep on keeping on. In other words, we're not reversal traders. What did you get? A smaller time frame setup. A smaller time frame setup. Same structure. It actually had what we call a primer in it, which you'll learn more about and how to deal with. In other words, it's actually had an opportunity to get a squeeze within a squeeze. Let's just get the chart back, back, back in as I was dropping time frame. Um, it took it all away from me. Um, there you go. So you actually had a squeeze within a squeeze. Look how low volatility this is. Five minutes, gents. We're on the five minute chart now. So this is a wind up after it beautifully made the target. Look at that compliance to target. You you bought back on that selling wick on the 15 minutes, which now you can see was just a massive rebound reversal. Then you saw the squeeze and you say, okay, we made target. Keep on keeping on trade to the south side you grab yourself another line of efficiency which is almost as steep you could have traded the break of what we call the grind line you'll learn about grind lines the attempted return move on a wedge spill 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 down through this target that target was made bang you're out there you're out there now um i'm not contradicting the guys that are saying eos is a good coin at all i'm just saying isn't it useful to choose your time when you engage the price you buy is exceedingly important. The buying right matters. Get the time right. Um, if you're already in, defend it if it's going to go through a rocky period. Defend it if it's going for a rocky period. So being technical doesn't mean you can't be fundamental. You can be fundamental. You can say EOS is going to be a magnificent coin. If you've been convinced um, at a fundamental level, and that's totally cool, um, there's no there's no grievance or issue with that. But get your entries right and make sure that you defend it at the key moments that defense is required. I did an internal loom and said, guys, this isn't going to uh, go too far. This is not positive. This grind. These lines were all drawn. I put it out there to my community for the guys that were in it. And then it was, look, it's popped out the top. It's all going to be hunky dory, da 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 da. Overnight, again, sell off and holding the line. So we've just made two downside targets there and then a wind up smaller time frame target this is what happens patterns get smaller and smaller and then the selling dissipates then you get what i call progress decay to no more clear cut downside quite a bit of pushback this churn over here falls into that category you should be out of short positions there unless you get a new setup which may come, but it may not. So you could get a new setup. We need to see. But this grind line was not telling me. It's not. Doesn't mean you go from a hundred percent bear and making targets to the downside to now believing a hundred percent bull, because you've pushed out the top there. Not at all. You're expecting push get back and a little a bit of rallies after targets are made. That's why targets are good exits, <laughs> because you're not going to go much lower for a while. There's going to be pushback. 
That's the value of taking money off the table. And that's the system that we have. And that's what it allows you to do. Um, and that defense that you could have played, I mean, this it's just fallen into the perfectly in at every level, the little primer, the little target. Look at that. You, you bought back on that wick. It only went a little bit further. You don't know how much volume and how short a time that zip and zap was. It's absolutely accurate to get out there. Look how it's rallied and stopped at the previous little uh, wind-ups pattern. And it had to form and grind and grind and grind until it could just stick its nose through the funnel levels here. And then that was it. It's exhausted, attempted return, move and spill. So we'll have to see now if it's truly ready to take back some of these levels and then that's where we talk about the three uh the 360 degree uh, aspect i'm seeing btc relatively weak to most of the alts i warned of a rising wedge here this isn't classic bottoming it was an attempt to go up here uh, and an attempt and then boom overnight what did you get you get the smash down who knows fundamentals do drive the market chaps um, we may have ethereum or even bitcoin at some point declared a security um, and that's going to send the two major market cap uh, big players into a spin and put a lot of uncertainty into the market. I'm feeling that there's uncertainty in this market. The guys hated me and said, aha, you were wrong. You know, you're being cautious, too cautious. It's back to bull, etc." When we were in this rising wedge, there was not enough power here um, for the super macro time frames for the four hourly and the daily. I have to remind people we haven't invalidated the bear market until we run this level. It's not a it's not a guesstimation with me. It's not a hunchy thing. It's uh, determined by price level. Simple. And at that point, I say, great, we've undone this. We might have a W bottom low if we get there. But look how slow this was in comparison to the rally here. We have real possibility. I've never had such a wide berth. So this you might not find particularly useful. We're waiting for the market to declare which direction it could go. It can go $2,000. That's BTC just above, um, and it can go 14 if it turns into a first setup in a new trend somewhere here. And we don't know yet whether this is going to be first setup in a new trend, which is actually less common. In most instances, we trade the, with the uh, governing uh, trend. So this major sell-off, a lot of fundamental, while we were mooning, a lot of fundamental bad news was building up for BTC, uh, well, more crypto generally, um, the state getting involved, uh, making decisions about SEC, a lot of exchanges being uh, monitored. There was actually a lot, and that then eventually started to lean on that and smashed us down. Is this a trend chain event, and do we go continuation to the downside here, or do we see this actually become a first setup eventually in a new trend? This is a weak rally, and there's some fairly strong capitulative selling on this downside. So the momentum legs start to give you an idea. Real risk that there is still scope for further downside. By the way, you can have a pattern and it can fail. So we can break to the downside and not make the target. I'm not saying because it breaks and makes a newer low here, it has signed a contract to go to the target. I say that is a potential on balance of probability event. And if we get a first setup in a new trend and it starts to get way more perky and upside and we get a nice high three up here with a very casual uh, slight drift before pumping out the top here that it has to go to 14.3. But the structure and the probabilities typically work that that is potentially feasible. But there's, as you'll all agree, um, in terms of the direction here, um, if anything, I'm biased there. Um, but it's not a strong, um, it's a 51%, 55% versus 45, 49% situation. It's not what I call high probability. It's finely balanced, but marginally to the bear side. Um, and if it gets more capitulative and goes lower and we trade really quickly down to start being these levels, this then becomes more 60, 40, 65, 35, etc. Um, as we get new information, we can rebalance that and also so if it goes highly impulsive and runs that high and gives a nice juicy high two or even invalidates here, then um, you swing the other way. Uh, and that's how it goes. Okay, gents. So that was EOS, a little bit of a, a view of how you can 
ensure that you if you have to get in you get in at the right points most of you would have been in earlier on that upside and you would have been loving it how you could have defended those profits that you made with the continuation patterns on the upside and i've just done them in very simplest formats and there were quite a few and there were more before this so i'm on a two hourly time frame you can see over here as well um, but the point is at some point you're going to have to learn how to play defense it's not rinse and repeat infinitum things change prices start to be fully priced uh, events change news flow changes this all affects on the markets other coins start to be sold off things start to be overvalued etc etc okay so that's a webinar if you want to find out more it's free but only for the serious this is not for everybody this is for well-resourced people that understand uh, that active investment um, where you manage your coins and you seek to build both BTC value and in bear markets USD uh, value as well so we have a dual valuation depending on the nature of the market um, you want to grow BTC and simultaneously uh, USD valuation. And there is a methodology that needs to be taken on board. It requires work participation. You'll be part of a community. Um, so it's not, it's, not, it's not a frivolous decision and it's a high value decision. So uh, it's, you've got to feel that something you want to do and that what I'm saying to you makes sense to a high level. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope it's been useful and educational and we'll speak to you all soon. Um, enjoy the day.